Luck Coaster, or sometimes referred to as Luck Coaster. Gotta really put emphasis on the Luck there. This is really the ride that put Vekoma on the map as far as their next generation of roller coasters. It opened in 2017 at Legendia in Poland. It's the first of their Bermuda Blitz models. We've since seen many other new Vekomas come around, but this is the only one of this specific layout. It's the star attraction of Legendia, and even though the park is not all the best, it's absolutely a place that you're going to want to visit if you make your way to Poland and you're a roller coaster fan, because this ride alone makes a visit worth it. It is outstanding. This is that wow ride that people experience, and they're like, holy crap, Vekoma can make really good roller coasters. It's a brilliant design. It's smooth. It's got comfortable trains, and each of these elements delivers. This is a powerful ride. I rode this probably about a dozen times when I was at Legendia. There was no line for it, so I just kept on marathon it and I had an airtime headache afterwards. That's how crazy it was doing back to back. It's a ride that doesn't slow down from start to finish and so in this video I'm going to do my best to describe the whole ride experience for you so if you haven't had the chance to experience the set you can know what to expect and also draw some comparisons to some other of the new Vekomas that I've gotten the chance to experience and talk about which ones I prefer. Before we do that, I wanna tell you guys first about ExpressVPN, and I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video. Whenever you send data on your phone, computer, or tablet while on a public internet connection, it's like mailing a postcard. Your message is wide open for the mailman and any nosy people to see. But a VPN, or virtual private network, puts an envelope around that postcard so no one can sneak a peek at that data you're sending. This makes it next to impossible for a hacker to steal your personal information. All you have to do is fire up the ExpressVPN app, connect, and you're good to go. This is perfect if you're traveling internationally to places like Poland. You can even change your device location to access content in up to 94 different countries that might be blocked wherever you currently are. That means you can access things like movies and shows in the Netflix catalog that might only be available in certain locations. ExpressVPN is your all-in-one VPN provider. Click the link in the description to sign up today and get your first three months completely free. Now let's dive into this ride. First things first, when you enter Legendia, What's so amazing about the placement of this ride is that they have it located directly in the sight line of your front entrance. You have this big lake in the center and you can look straight across and see Lech Coaster. So yes, it is a bit of a walk to get around to it, but visually it's already very impressive. They did a really good job with the immediate area that this ride is in. It feels very modern and new. The whole thing feels very medieval. They've got kind of this Lord of the Rings, like How to Train Your Dragon style music playing. Though I have heard that Let Coaster has its own dedicated soundtrack. You'll see a kind of Viking statue out front. That is Lech. Lech is the legendary founder of Poland. The legend goes that Lech was hunting, shot an arrow at his prey, and then followed it back only to find himself face to face with the fierce white eagle guarding its nest from intruders. Lech saw it as a good omen and decided to settle there. And that's why a white eagle with a coat of arms remains the symbol of Poland to this day. So the Poles decide to do the only logical thing and to then make a roller coaster after him. So I guess that'd be the equivalent of like Fun Spot making a George Washington theme coaster or something. I don't know. When you enter the queue, I think they've originally planned for way higher crowds than they probably get because this queue is confusing and it's really long. And it's weird because when we went, it was completely dead. So many of the rows were completely empty. Like as we were walking through, you can see that it was like originally supposed to have a pre-show. I don't know if it's ever used that room. Maybe it did like right when it first opened, but we just bypassed it. The queue at least looks nice. It's just way unnecessarily long. You have a very nice looking station, very reminiscent of like an old building you'd see in like a classic village. You board your trains. These are very comfortable seats for restraint. You pull this down over you. It's kind of a lap bar that sits across your waist and then a vest that goes over your shoulders. It's not suffocating or anything like the vest that you'll find on a B&M like wing coaster. I didn't mind these at all. And one perk with the fact that this ride doesn't get very many long lines is that you will more than likely have the opportunity to experience this in the front row as well as the back. I thought both were amazing. I don't have a strong opinion that one is necessarily better than the other. I loved both. So definitely give them a try while you're there. You dispatch out of the station, take a right hand turn and start up your lift hill. Light coaster stands 131 feet tall. And after your drop, you reach a max speed of almost 60 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive. And they start with this really whippy moment where Light coaster just throws you to the side down your first drop. I know a lot of people here have done Expedition G-Force or maybe Conda, that's a newer Intamin that also has a very similar kind of first drop. 
A lot of people really love that first element. It's a heck of a way to start off this ride because you absolutely just get thrown. You're diving then through some rock work. Brief little tunnel there. This first section of the ride is completely over water, which is really cool. And you enter the first of three inversions. This is a reverse sidewinder. And this is when you will start to gray out. And pretty hard to be honest. Let Coaster pulls some pretty crazy positive G's at the bottom of this first drop and the bottom of that first inversion. So that whole element you're struggling to see. It's a very strong grail like every single time you ride. It doesn't let up until you go into that first airtime hill. I was definitely surprised at the forces that this thing pulled. It's easily the most intense moment of the ride but as I mentioned earlier Let Coaster does not let up. I love this first airtime hill. At its peak, you start rotating to the side. You're going right, you switch to the left, banking right up against the water, and then you have a traditional camelback hill plunging you through the station. This is cool and all when you ride it, but honestly, it makes more of an impression when you're actually standing in the station. You just see the train flying above you. It's a really cool moment. and gets you excited to experience this thing. When you exit the station, you fly underneath a big old tree branch. That's part of the theming that you'll see out back. There's an overbank curve to your left, and then you flip to your right way low to the ground there's multiple of these moments on let coaster where you're just so low i mean pretty much this whole second half of the ride is not that high off the ground and that's part of the reason that it's able to carry its speed so well you do another twisted airtime hill where you're going to the right you switch to the left diving underneath the brake run into your final inversion a corkscrew and you continue rotating over the water banking outwards to the right flipping to the other side, going over another ejector pop, this time rotating to the right, right up against the water, and then into the brake run. A lot happens in this roller coaster that it will take multiple rides for you to really process it all. The pacing is fantastic. And one thing I was really glad about when I experienced this was I was really happy that I had experienced Phonix at Far Up Summerland first. This is actually a newer Vacoma. This is their Wildcat model. Has a lot of similarities in that it's a combination of airtime hills and inversions, but Phonix is dialed back a bit. It's tamer, but it's still like really thrilling. It's just let coasters like dialed up to 11. So they toned it down a bit when they did Phonix. So as a result, I thought Let Coaster had stronger pacing and definitely more intense moments. And it might be because I think some people are going to get off Let Coaster and think it's too intense. But for me, this is my kind of ride. I like that sort of thing. So for that reason, Phonix might be a bit more enjoyable for like a wider audience. I know at that park, they have a lot of families. So it makes sense that they did that. Let Coaster is absolutely a ride for the thrill seekers. There are multiple moments of ejector airtime. You're just getting tossed around but I don't think it throws you around like some Intamins do. Like, I wouldn't say this ride is as whippy as something like Maverick. Still has a lot of really strong moments, and the transitions are fantastic, but the way it like flips you from side to side is just slightly more gradual compared to a ride like Maverick. So I would personally take that roller coaster over this one, but I would take Let Coaster over a ride like Exhibition G-Force. That ride's bigger and has always been a fan favorite, but Let Coaster is more compact, I think has stronger pacing, and overall just leaves you more going like, holy crap, that just happened. So for Let Coaster's final score, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Only reason I'm not giving a perfect score is because I do wish it had a little bit more whip to it in a couple of these moments, but that's just my personal preference. I think plenty of people will ride this roller coaster and think that it doesn't need it, and that Let Coaster is more whippy than most roller coasters, which it absolutely is. I think personally, though, that's just the one thing I would have done if I were trying to make this roller coaster even more crazy and impactful. But hey, those are just my thoughts on Let Coaster at Legendia. Let me know down in the comments below if you've experienced this ride, if you agree with my points, if you think there's anything I missed, and of course, stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.